Well, I'd like to go, I'd like to first of all to thank Pierre and to uh, introduce uh, Roxanne Stockwell because there are alternative providers who have been working towards uh, uh, degree awarding powers. There are some that have achieved them already and I think BPP and others are one. Uh, there's a lot of talk and hot air in the media about it, some of it a, a bit of a false uh, polarisation. But nonetheless, it is clear that there is space in the uh, demand from students and from employers for alternative models and alternative providers and alternative finance ones. And one of the ones that always fascinated me was when Pearson going into this area, they were one of the first ones that began to look at it and talk about it uh, publicly. And we're very pleased to have Roxanne Stockwell, who's the principal of uh, Pearson College with us to make a contribution. <laughs> uh, I think it's 700 students. Um, so, you know, growing and significant. So, uh, Roxanne, we look forward to your comments and then we'll have some more discussion afterwards. London, uh, which is a uh, separate legal entity that's set within Pearson. Uh, for those of you who don't know Pearson, it's a global FTSE 100 company. Um, it has been through all sorts of different um, industries in its history. It's about 170 years old, but it's now very much focused on education. Uh, so we publish um, a lot of textbooks, more textbooks for universities than any other publisher uh, in the world. Until very recently, sadly, we used to uh, own the FT and Penguin. Um, and we have Edexcel, which is the largest UK awarding body. It doesn't award degrees, but awards all sorts of other qualifications. And we offer a whole range of learning services, um, curriculum development, etc., cetera, um, all over the world. So that's Pearson as a whole. Um, which is quite big, and we're, we're a little tiny part of that. Um, so I joined Pearson in 2011, and uh, with the aim of setting up uh, what would hopefully one day become a university. So we have created a separate legal entity, um, which is called Pearson College London. It has two schools within it, Pearson Business School and Escape Studios. Pearson Business School delivers uh, various degrees around business law, accounting, and so on. Escape Studios delivers degrees and also other types of courses around visual effects, gaming, 2D, 3D, animation, those kinds of areas. So we've got a, um, a skills shortage school, if you like, and a, a more kind of uh, common school that you would see with Pearson Business School. Um, so when I started and we were going to do this, I had to think about what sort of higher education institution was, was this going to be? So it was going to be the first higher education institution uh, set up and grown from within a FTSE 100 company. And it, it, there's obviously a lot of really good universities uh, in the UK. There was no point really in kind of like repeating uh, what was already out there. So what we decided to really focus on and where we thought Pearson would have something um, extra to contribute was around the whole employer engagement space. So everything that we do is about knitting together employer engagement and the academic side um, and bringing them together as much as possible. And I, I almost see it as a kind of laboratory for exploring how far can we go with employer engagement, where does it make sense, where does it add value, etc. Um, so that's the kind of, that's our mission really, is around that employer engagement and the academic side and bringing them together within higher education. So uh, higher education has always been a lot about uh, community, like if you look back over its history, over hundreds of years, um, often a separate community from the wider society in different ways. And so one of the things that we're trying to do is to have a community that is literally set within a business that has some links with that business and then has links with Pearson itself has lots of different contacts, obviously with lots of other businesses and companies. So, so incorporate some of those links as well and builds other links. So it's a kind of um, uh, as close as we can get to authentic business community. So that's kind of at the nub, at the heart of what it is that we're trying to uh, develop. Now. Uh, one of the things that I've had to think about is why, uh, why we're doing this, if we're looking at it from the point of view of the institution and also from the students. Um, and there's three reasons. People always jump, oh, it's employability. It's not, it's not just about employability. 
and maybe not even primarily about employability, which of course is a difficult word that has all sorts of, all sorts of different connotations around it as well. Um, but it is uh, one of the key reasons is intellectual, because students who are more engaged with relevant, real, authentic uh, business experiences, and I'm using business in, a, in its broadest possible sense, and there's a lot of studies that support this, actually do better academically, as well as obviously gaining some skills and experiences that go onto their CV. So this is not a kind of soft skills, which is a, a phrase that I loathe, because um, actually I think they're extremely hard skills. <laughs> um, it's not a kind of soft skills addition. It's um, if you, as a student, if you're studying a subject area and then you have to look at how it works or doesn't work and isn't applied in a real uh, business context, it's so complex and it's so challenging that there's a whole intellectual development that is there as well, as well as hopefully making people much more interested in the subject as well. So that's, that's one part. Um, another part is around what I'll broadly call corporate citizenship. And by that, I don't mean uh, being a citizen of your own particular company that you're, em you're employed by, but just generally being uh, aware of how business really shapes uh, and employment really shapes the whole way society works um, and is funded and all that sort of thing. So that hopefully you're coming out and it's not just about you and your career and can I get a job at certain, uh, a certain amount of money, but you have at least an understanding of, of how um, everything is interconnected and what business does has all sorts of implications and some of it's good and some of it's bad and, and that more sort of critical view. And then the third one is around, of course, helping students with employment um, and their careers and that hopefully what they will have learned and experienced, not necessarily always taught by our teachers, but also part of the experience um, of being at Pearson Business School or Escape will actually help them in their early career and, and going forward. So there's really three interconnected reasons around that. So I've been asked to share uh, our kind of experiences on the, the learning and teaching uh, side uh, within the business school. So when we think about employer engagement, and also as it happens, um, I'm doing a, a doctorate in employer engagement and HE at the same time. So there's a kind of nice segue with this talk and my job and all that kind of thing. So, um, uh, so I find all of this really fascinating as to what it means, what it should look like, what value does it have, um, et cetera. But we obviously see some fantastic employer engagement in universities around the UK. Probably in all universities, there's some really good examples of employer engagement there. A lot of it uh, tends to be around research at the higher level, which is obviously absolutely superb in, in, in many instances. Of course, employers uh, take on graduates, uh, and that counts as employer engagement, according to some of the articles um, that, um, that I've read. And employers often offer internships um, or one-year type workplaces, uh, work placements. Um, so those kinds of things are, are reasonably common and often done extremely well to the benefit of all the parties um, who are involved. But what we were interested in was trying to um, take that much further and see to what extent we could get the employers involved in um, the design and the delivery of the courses, and particularly at undergraduate level, which is what we're mostly focused on at the moment, although not exclusively. Um, rather than at the postgraduate and PhD level, where you sometimes see it um, uh, in more detail. Um, so uh, our kind of viewpoint was that we should involve employers as much as we can, and that we consider them as the missing professors of higher education. So you've got professors who have obviously a fantastic amount of knowledge, experience in whatever their area is, but there is this other whole set of people who, when it comes to the way things work, um, happen in the workplace, um, also have a very high level of expertise. So somehow bringing those missing professors into what it is that we're doing. So I thought I would just work through some examples um, uh, of, of what we've been doing. We are very new. We only started in 2012 with a small uh, single uh, class group um, in 2012. Um, so we've only been going for just coming up to four years, which obviously in university times is, uh, terms is like five minutes. Um, so a lot of this is you know, still being very much developed. And as we go on, we hope we'll be able to do some, um, some good rigorous studies around some of it and see um, how the effectiveness of various initiatives work. So one of our first point, points uh, was to um, make sure that every degree that we designed was designed with employers. So we have what we call a degree concept team, which includes um, employers, 
and student representation and, of course, academic rep uh, representation. So, and that they work through, um, not just at the end, but right from the beginning uh, in the whole design process of the blueprint that ultimately we take uh, for, uh, to, to get validated um, and then approved by professional bodies or whatever else that might be needed. Um, so they're in involved right from the start. So our very first degree, uh, which was a business and enterprise degree, we had BT and Cisco as our, um, uh, our corporate leads. Um, we had Nigel Slack, who's a, a very well-known uh, professor in operations management. He was our academic lead. And we had Aaron Porter, which many of you probably know, who quite a few years ago now, well, not about six years ago now, uh, was um, president of um, the NUS. Um, so we all worked together, and obviously people from the college, we all worked together in actually designing um, that kind of blueprint. And it was quite a feisty experience at times. Um, uh, but, you know, <laughs> everyone was very happy with the result um, in the end, but there were some um, um, uh, arguments and debates around roles of exams and whatnot, all, all that kind of thing as we went through it. Um, our, one of our most recent degrees in business management, um, we've had people like Unilever, the law firm RAG, uh, Formula One, sports, etc. So a whole mix of different businesses. And the important thing here is that these are not about their employees. So these, these companies are not coming to design something for their employees. Uh, they are coming to uh, contribute their expertise to a course that will be open to you know, anyone to be able to apply. Um, one of the things I was quite surprised about was how keen businesses were to actually contribute. In my first year, I set um, a target for um, our external relations person to bring in three businesses that would work with us on the design of the first um, uh, program. Um, and within 12 months, uh, we had about 60. Uh, so we've actually found in talking to businesses that they are really keen to be involved in all sorts of different ways. And it is a, a great resource uh, that business schools and universities um, uh, can draw on. Um, we, uh, our very most recent one was a series of undergraduate degrees uh, for Escape Studios, which is the visual effects, um, gaming, etc. one. And that took the DCT much further. So that had um, uh, people, um, uh, that, that had a whole range of different people um, on that from that industry. So there was um, Paul Francis, for example, um, who is the founder of Double Negative and has won two um, Oscars and Tara Saunders, who's also on our academic board, as it happens, so we have industry on our academic board as well, um, who is the art director for the, um, the London studio for uh, Sony, and uh, Charlie Bayliss, um, who's uh, the technical director <coughs> for Framestore, which is the company that's done Paddington Bear and um, uh, Harry Potter and, and those kinds of programs. So again, all these people from industry, and what, what we did there, was we took the DCT much further. So they contributed a lot to the idea around the pedagogy. They really wanted to see uh, what we sort of called a studio approach, where the, the, as many of the classes as possible, the students are acting and behaving as if they are in a studio and they're given all sorts of different industry briefs and so on throughout the degree. Um, after designing that, um, that DCT then piloted that pedagogy um, in two sets of... Uh, intensive two weeks. This was, the first one was with recent um, alumni from the, the area. The second one was with um, uh, students who were considering going into that area. But they sort of obviously crammed it right up, but they piloted that actual um, pedagogical approach, uh, which involved um, very rapid industry briefs, quite brutal feedback, speaking of resilience. Um, uh, the, and this was all done with these people. So there were people from uh, genuine companies in it before all of that went to validation. So by the time it went to validation, we tested some of that pedagogy as well, which um, was great having that kind of um, input from them. Um, so a different um, uh, kind of example is the fact that we are actually housed within um, a big global company. So we literally have two floors from in one of the, ma the main buildings um, uh, in the centre of London, and we the, actually, the space has just been redesigned and is in, we're moving into it this week, so it's very exciting for us. Um, and we've tried to design it to kind of look uh, in that sort of modern cafe style now that you might see down at the, B, the BFI or the Hoxton or something like that, uh, where if you ever go and sit there and have a cup of coffee, there are so many people carrying on business, including meetings and all sorts of things in that kind of environment, which will hopefully create... Um, there's classrooms as well, of course, but a sort of collaborative um, uh, sort of aura around that and encourage students into that sort of collaboration um, that's needed as well. 
Uh, but also, because we're part of Pearson, um, uh, students can have uh, company-based mentors if they want to, and there's quite a few opportunities they have to present different things to different parts of the company, which is very good for them uh, for their own development. And, and invariably, uh, the company is really amazed by these students, which goes back to the 18-year-old versus you know someone who's already a graduate. There are a lot of talented people at, you know, at all ages, even if they haven't yet been through um, university. And they even get to pitch certain things. So some of them have started their own micro-businesses and they've pitched some of that into, to, into Pearson. I was talking to one student yesterday who was pitching some kind of artificial intelligence idea um, into Rod Bristow, who's like second from the top um, uh, at Pearson and um, various other ways of interacting there, which I think is really good for um, the uh, students' experience in lots of ways. So another uh, tack that we've taken, and I'm just cherry-picking a few things that I thought might be of interest, um, is our admissions process. So uh, we did find ourselves kind of forced into setting um, uh, an A-level tariff, because if you don't if you don't have that, you kind of look completely out of kilter with everyone else. But actually, we have a twin track approach. So um, if people have the A-level tariff, um, then that's fine, although all of them have to have an interview. Um, but the approach that ideally we'd rather see everyone uh, come through um, is it's had various names. I'll call it an assessment day at the moment, which um, involves several um, tests. So there's an online test on cognitive skills and um, uh, critical thinking and core skills, as well as a written piece, as well as an interview. Um, and uh, then obviously they also meet some people from uh, the college, some staff and students, etc. The idea is for it to gently reflect an assessment day that you might see as a graduate, not, not, not as sort of harshly as what they might be, um, but uh, to, what we're trying to do there is to identify potential without necessarily referring to uh, A-level scores, you know, uh, previous ed educational um, uh, achievement. And it's been really interesting because we've now, we've just started to get people, uh, our first sort of graduates through. And so we've had another part of Pearson um, do some analysis of the data around some of that. And, and what we have found is the best predictor, remember this is for getting through the course and how they do on the course, because we haven't really been going long enough to look at long-term employment impact. Um, but the best predictor of the five different things that we might look at, which is the A-level scores, the interview, a core skills um, online test, a uh, critical thinking online test, and the written piece, um, the best one was the core skills, which is what we consider to be the easiest test. But for some reason, in that test, that has the best kind of correlation with how students will end up doing on the program. And that became very interesting because um, in our... Uh, third year, the BBC um, uh, approached us to do a degree apprenticeship uh, with them, and they were really keen on not going automatically for A-level scores, partly because of this Oxbridge thing that we were talking about before, and getting a more diverse view. So they wanted to uh, not look that at all. We could talk through our assessment day route, and they basically took all of that and added a group collaborative exercise um, to that as well. And um, we're now going into our third year for that, and we've had 700 applications for only 10 places. So it must be one of the most competitive courses in the country, I, I would imagine. Um, and none of that are they looking at the A-level scores. They're looking for this other, the, this other way of trying to find potential to have a, a more diverse um, workforce. And the first set that started three years ago have now just graduated, and they have now all being confirmed that they will be going on to have a, a, a long-going employment job with the BBC. Um, so, and I, I don't know that we would have got there if we hadn't been doing that assessment day route. I think spotting potential in uh, non-traditional ways is something that a lot of companies are really interested in for a whole host of different reasons. And, uh, and we're obviously still, you know, working on developing that. Um, but that was a really interesting um, experience. Um, we also have, in the delivery side, we, we try and make it roughly 50-50, but you have to be very flexible with employers, so it doesn't turn out exactly like this, of the sort of traditional lectures and seminars that they have in classrooms, and then workshops or industry days um, where they, where, whenever possible, actually go to the premises of the company, and sometimes the company comes to us, and it might be a whole day or a couple of days, uh, or it might be a series of workshops um, over a few weeks. Um, where the company essentially 
uh, will give talks and set challenges and um, the, the students will have to do, they might have to prepare a marketing plan or do a basic design of an app or whatever it is uh, that might be, but something that's very real. They're engaging with, with um, uh, the people from the business. We often have very senior people um, there, so that's, you know, that all of that is good experience uh, for the students. Um, and in the last year, for example, we've had, um, uh, we had a, a industry day with um, IBM, we had another one with uh, Unilever, we had another one at Pearson, and then there's, there's been a whole range of others. We had one at, um, uh, at Sackville, the, um, the real estate agents, and the students helped redesign their way they did their graduate recruitment not to get themselves jobs, but um, just redesign their graduate re recruitment generally. Um, and there's always some kind of activity they have to do with that. And then sometimes that carries on. This, this is naturally, and this sort of brings me onto the extracurricular. Not all of this is credit bearing. Some of this is extracurricular um, as well, but it's still part of the learning experience. Um, so at the moment, for example, some of the students have created um, an app which is um, around uh, basic language um, uh, phrases that people might need in refugee camps in multiple um, uh, languages. And they've now gone in to pitch that idea to Google, which wasn't the company that we were originally uh, working with. I, I don't know how far that will go, but that, even that is a fantastic experience for the, the students um, to have gone through. Um, and we also have various social enterprise things. Uh, my favorite one is one that we set up in the first year. I say we, the students set it up. And it was a social enterprise uh, project in India that was helping a number of um, uh, farming wives whose husbands had committed suicide because there had been a whole uh, range of problems um, uh, in that particular region. And what they were doing was, uh, what the, the students were doing, were working with um, the, the ladies involved to create these various products out of cotton, which they're then marketing to various businesses uh, back in London. And um, obviously it's a... It's a great thing for the students to be involved in. It's, it's great to be doing something to help. Um, uh, but also, the students have passed it on each year. So each year, they've passed it on to the next set of students and then on to the next set of students, which I really like that because that then links with the corporate citizenship side and helping contribute to, to um, younger students uh, coming in after that. Um, so that's, that's particularly one of my favorites. And then finally, I thought I'd just touch on two that we are in the process of doing. So these are highly experimental, haven't started yet. Um, one of them is um, we, we have quite a lot of students who are interested in entrepreneurship. And we're going to be setting aside some space um, in uh, the business school uh, for an incubator. And this was, again, this was all a student's idea. And we're having it as student-led as possible, uh, choosing a startup ed tech company uh, that will be able to have that space there uh, free for a year. Um, and the idea is that in return, that there is some engagement with the students throughout the year. Um, and from the students' point of view, they're able to watch and observe and engage with what's happening in the inc incubator throughout the year, which it could be anything, it could be completely chaotic. I don't know yet what it will look like. But it's kind of cute because it's a business within a business school within a business. So we've got this whole Russian doll thing going that we quite like. Um, so that's interesting. So instead of having a visiting pro professor or an artist in residence that you might have, uh, we're having our own little um, uh, startup company in residence. And the students are going to choose the startup company, um, uh, et cetera. Um, and then the final one relates to apprenticeships. So. For us, uh, degree apprenticeships are uh, a really good example of exactly what it is that we're, we're committed to, bringing the two things together. Um, and so we're obviously um, looking at that. And as I said, we've already got a degree apprenticeship going with the BBC. Um, we're, this September, we're starting a, another degree apprenticeship. This is a pilot, uh, which we call the rotational degree apprenticeship. And uh, that's with um, six big companies. So that's um, Pearson is one of them. Uh, WPP, Unilever, Direct Line, um, IBM, uh, Tesco, I think that's the six. Um, and what they wanted, all of them are interconnected in different ways. Their, their clients all work together on things in different ways. It mightn't sound like they do, but they do have connections. And um, each of them are taking on two apprentices and they start this September on a degree apprenticeship, the CMI one. And they, the, 
all the students will rotate around three of the companies during the apprenticeship. So they have the first year with their home company, then eight months with the second company, eight months with the third company, and the final eight months, it takes three years, um, with, um, the, back with their home company again. Um, and they will effectively move into each other's roles. Now you can imagine these six big companies, they've all got their own, own agendas, etc. But somehow, within three months, we managed to get them all to agree to do everything at exactly the same time, all together, let's all ha hold hands and jump. I'm still quite shocked that <laughs> we've done that. Um, it's only a small group, but um, and they really love the idea. They, they really love the idea because they love the idea of of their. Um, one of the problems is if you just leave the training and education to the company, they only get that one perspective. Um, but by moving around with three other places, then that's a whole different way of broadening a student's mind. That we, you know is one of the things that we expect people to come out uh, of a degree with. Um, so. Um, all the apprentices have been chosen. We only had a very, um, very short period of time to uh, advertise it. So when we were talking about whether people, uh, young people will apply for apprenticeships, um, we had uh, 228 applications in a two week window of advertising. So, um, and this was in um, July, late July, August, which I thought was amazing because everyone's away on holidays. Um, and so uh, personally, I think that um, once people start to realise degree apprenticeships, I, I don't know about how effective that will be with other apprenticeships, but that you don't necessarily have to make a choice between those two things now. You can do something where you're able to do both, and particularly if you have the opportunity to, to work with um, uh, well-known companies, um, I, I think that you could see a, a quite significant status change around degree apprenticeships. And I think that's one of the reasons why the government's particularly keen on degree apprenticeships, to help try and resolve um, that, that low status um, view that attaches itself sometimes to apprenticeships. And it still does. I mean, even our BBC ones, who it was incredibly incompetitive to get into, have said that when they're talking to people at the BBC, they've sometimes had people say, oh, an apprentice, and felt as if you know, which was really interesting because, of course, they're delighted to be one and the BBC, you know, um, or maybe there's some parts who didn't necessarily want them, I don't know from what was said earlier, but th they clearly want that. So there is, I mean, there are still issues around that, but I think that maybe um, through what uh, business schools will start doing and, and other parts of universities that that whole um, attitude um, will change. So um, there's lots more that I could talk about, but I think that's, that was kind of touching on a few examples. Um, and we're basically trying to see how far we can take employer engagement. We have to have all the academic side as well. I mean, we can't be validated or approved or anything with all that too. So that, go, you know, that kind of goes without saying. I'm saying it just in case. <laughs> but how to add that and to really help with the learning experience, both from an interest point of view and hopefully in time, um, good career prospects. That's all. Okay, thank you very much.